Peace be upon Hussein, Ali, son of Hussein. The sons of Hussein and the companions of Imam Hussein, peace be upon them. Respected viewers, brothers, and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight we have with us a brother from the UK and a eulogist, or if you will, a radud, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed of becoming uh, a servant of Ahlul Bayt and especially a servant of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. He currently resides in the UK and in the United States. So let's welcome with me Sayyid Ali Al Hakim. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidna. Wa alaikum as How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How are you, sir? Hope everything is good. Alhamdulillah. 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 Hope you're well. Alhamdulillah. Uh, just to start off, how was your trip to Karbala? Well, during this, during, during this hot weather. Yeah, sure. It's a bit different, that. you know. Uh, it's a bit different to the UK, but you know, you adapt to the surroundings. Uh, well, yeah. first I entered Kuwait, and then from Kuwait I had to cross the border into Basra, then to Karbala. But alhamdulillah, all for the service of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Basra is hot right now, no? Basra is... Uh, Steamy. I would say it's like having a hair dryer. Yeah. Constantly being blown in your face. Yeah, and you had a hair problem yesterday. Yeah, th yeah <laughs> the thing is, I get I got, I got get dry skin really quickly, so I have to keep yeah. on washing my hair, and you know, the water here is a bit salty, but... It is, yeah. Tawakkal ala Allah, alhamdulillah, shukar, alhamdulillah. You mentioned you went to Kuwait. What was the motive behind your visit there? Kuwait... Um, well, every year I produce an album mm -hmm. and based on, I always try and gain feedback from each album to mm -hmm. inshallah continue to progress. And the feedback that I got was the next album needs to have full HD quality sound recording. Mm -hmm. And there are quite, the, quite, there's quite a number of um, studios which have full HD quality in the UK, but I'd prefer to go to the Arab world to get a more professional job done when it comes to eulogies Mm -hmm. because they have an idea they've got a good understanding of how to record as opposed to the UK hence why um, the feedback I got was there's, there's two main studios in Kuwait which is uh, Hussam Yusri's and Abdullah Mbarak so that's why I went to Kuwait this year mm -hmm. originally to record um, the new album mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting because Basim actually goes there to an Abadar yeah, yeah, yeah. Basim Karbala he goes to uh, Abdullah Mbarak and Abadar he goes to um, Hussam Yusri's and there's quite a number of um, famous reciters that go there so when I went there you know obviously uh, not up to their standard but I came and Alhamdulillah they welcomed me with open arms and uh, really nice humble people and Alhamdulillah we managed to work in a much more effective manner um, because the people who, who were there can speak English so they kind of understood what I was saying so oh, the, okay, the work nice. w worked a bit a bit better. So alhamdulillah. And also you said Lat Miyad. So the next album you have producing or on the way is uh, an a Lat Miyad album. Sure. Yeah. It's gonna be called Karabela's Flag, and mm -hmm. uh, this album it's relatively unique. It's gonna be six tracks. Mm -hmm. One of the tracks is about Imam Al Mahdi, which is gonna be an er early release in Allah for Eid Al Fatr, but it's also gonna be added with the, the main album. Mm -hmm. Karbala's flag has six tracks and the the poets did a really good job on this album actually. I told them to think outside the box. Because mm -hmm. we, we get poetry which is where Imam Hussein speaking to Sayyid Zainab, Sayyid Zainab speaking to Abu Fadl Abbas salam, which is all fantastic poetry and the poets in the Arab world are very creative. Mm -hmm. But I thought let's 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 be a bit more creative here. Um, so, for example, one of the poems, uh, it's as if a bird is speaking on the day of Ashura, mm -hmm. and the bird is flying and it's and it gazes down and it looks and it sees what's happening. It starts off by talking about what it sees in the enemies. Then it sees one man called Hor and how he enters and sees Imam Hussein, yeah. and one and then how Hor begs at the door of Imam Hussein. Then the bird flies and it sits on the tent of the Ahlul Bayt. Then it looks down and looks at Sayyid Zainab and. The bird is it's it's feeling upset of what it's seeing. Zaid Zainab crying, and then it goes to about Abdullah Hussein, and then it, say, it says how the bird sees Imam Hussein and how the bird wants to help Imam Hussein, but it can't. And as Imam Hussein fell, the bird also fell. So it's 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 it's, 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 it's thinking outside the box, and there's other things like that within the poem within within the album. So inshallah, I hope the. Uh, Audience enjoy this um, album, inshallah. That's thinking way outside the box. I mean, that's that's actually pretty nice to th to hear about. 
So inshallah, we'll stay tuned. Inshallah. But um, speaking of such um, of such an establishment, support must have a significant part, uh, which plays in this uh, in this album. Yeah, sure. Um, every year, when a reciter wants to record an album, <coughs> especially in the English language, uh, quite often I see that the reciters who record in English, they, they're relatively still young, the ones that I know. So it's either they're in university or they've graduated recently. And a person who's recently graduated from university, they require quite a, quite a bit of financial support, especially if they're going to record an album to a full HD quality um, scale. And Alhamdulillah, we managed to get donations for this album, but in general, I do believe that it's very important us as Shi'as of Imam Ali alayhi salam to invest our funds in projects for the service of Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It could be through investing in a recital, or it could be investing money for food for a majlis or investing mm -hmm. money for a, a mosque in general. Anything for the Ahlul Bayt will be recorded on the Day of Judgment. Of and course. seeing as us where the Shi'a of Imam Ali, we have to always try and set the example and unfortunately um, within our communities I do feel there's a lack of um, will to donate to events now some communities are very good at donating they mm -hmm. just they're very passionate about the mm -hmm. Ahlul Bayt especially the tragedy of Karbala and once they hear the tragedies they feel like they want to invest their money spend their money and at the end of the day um, we're trying to send we're trying to send the message of Imam Hussein of course. And when when we're trying to get the message of cross, I, Imam Hussein wanted us to become good good people. He wanted us to get closer to Allah and not do haram. That was the main that was the, one of the, the the main concepts of the whole is good versus bad on the day of, on the, on the day of Ashura. So we have to try and continue to portray this message. And because we are talking about the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, we have to always try and give the best image of the Ahlul Bayt i.e. a lecturer who's going to read on the member of Imam Hussein he has to always know exactly what he's talking about he needs to become really prepared and he needs to make sure that all the details that he's written are backed with references and and legitimate ahadith otherwise if these otherwise if the if this if this information isn't legitimate and it's not accurate we are doing a disfavor to the Ahlul Bayt because they had a message which they wanted to bring across to the Ummah and if we're not giving the right message to the Ummah because of our incorrect information then that could be detrimental to the image of the Ahlul Bayt Similarly, it comes to recitations. Now, when it comes to recitations, I do believe a poet needs to do his best ability when writing a poem. Mm -hmm. He has to always think about writing outside the box and be very creative and invest his passion in the uh, poetry and the best way to do that is maybe for example go out on a trip and think about you know i don't know, just go 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 for example into a forest and just just look just be connected with his lord mm -hmm. and that's one of the important things but also within our communities we need to invest our time effort and money so we can try and portray the best image of the Ahlul Bayt. This is one of the reasons why actually I went to Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Because if we, have to, if we have to portray the best image of the Ahlul Bayt, we have to produce the best quality for the Ahlul Bayt. Of course. Hence why it's better <coughs> to record one really, really good track, which is full HD quality and the poetry is amazing, as opposed to 10 normal tracks, which will be distributed. Why? Because we have to produce quality as opposed to quantity. Of course, and I, that's actually significant because um, even as a youth, even me, and even actually all, everyone who, um, who follow the, the path of Ahlul Bayt, uh, they learn more from the tracks recorded by uh, eulogists and radudes than they actually listen to a lecture. Because, and also that's significant in, in its own because um, the message of Ahlul Bayt is not only spread through uh, the lectures, but also spreads uh, through the Radud's word and the, and the poet's words. And it's significant to note that many uh, eulogists and Radud's in today's world, um, we can't say that they're uneducated, mm -hmm. but they seem to lack um, the difference, if you will, between haram and halal mm -hmm. uh, reciting. 
Ah, so uh, why is it, why is it important for a eulogist and an adud to be educated, and how do you become a good uh, reciter? I do believe that Karbala is an institute of education for Islam in nearness to Allah. Each incident had its role to play for the Ummah, mm -hmm. be it from Abu Fadl Abbas, be it from Sayyidina Zainab, be it from Ruqayya mm -hmm. Each member of the Ahlul Bayt had a role to play in the imagery of what is perfection for us Ummah to copy in our daily lives. Each mm -hmm. incident has its role to play for us to improve our lives Definitely. so we can get closer to Allah before the Day of Judgment. And I do believe a role of a reciter is very important. I completely agree with what you said because yes, lectures are very important because we need to get, we need to gain the knowledge to understand what our deen is. We need to improve, like be it from the fiqh or even improving our spirituality. Of course. But I do believe, especially for the youth, one of the key ways to attract an individual who might not be on the path of the Ahlul Bayt is mm -hmm. through the recitations because mm -hmm. people like to listen to things they like to listen to words with, with a tune they, they enjoy this and one of the effective ways is through recitations of Latmiyat, Nohaz or Anashid and then through that through the poetry they understand exactly what's going on the poetry itself becomes an educational material for the individual so then later they can come and understand exactly what the Ahlul Bayt is. So for example, you get you have a person who doesn't know anything, who's Imam Hussein. Then he li listens to a Latmiyyah. Oh, this sounds nice, what's going on here? He listens to it, and as he listens to it, he starts picking up key information. Then he gets curious, yeah. what happened here? What's going on here? Definitely. Then he goes, links it to the lecture. And then from there, from the lectures, he bases his foundation of Islam, and then he builds his portfolio of his Islamic knowledge. So that's why, that's why I'm trying to as well as alhamdulillah uh, my fellow brother reciters in English they're trying to stress the key importance of recitations in English mm -hmm. sometimes you go to a majlis and you know um, it's very unfortunate the adults say um, okay the lecture's finished okay it's time to go home now and you see the young children they want to participate in the Matam Azada of Imam Hussein alayhi yeah. salam but the parents don't agree with this and there could, there's, 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 a numerous, there's numerous reasons of why a parent would say this, but at the end of the day, you're preventing your son from serving Imam Hussein on such a grand scale where this is going to inspire him to become a better person as they grow older. Definitely. So for, I can speak from my own personal experiences. My dad, he used, to, he used to and still does recite Remember Imam Hussein in Dar al-Islam, Manchester. And when I was small, I used to look up to my dad and I used to look at him and think, oh, one day I want to be like this. And it would be like all the kids. We didn't know what was going on, mm -hmm. but we got the atmosphere and the understanding of what's like of Imam Hussein, like Abad Wallah Manas Hussein at the end. And the kids used to like that. And then through mm -hmm. that, that's our foundation. And then before we didn't want to come to the mosque, now we want to come to the mosque. That's yeah. why it's key important. And um, the mention you mentioned the point at the end, which is um, after the um, uh, the importance of serving the Ahlul Bayt. I do believe that anything for the Ahlul Bayt, mm -hmm. be it from reciting or writing a poem or just you know even cleaning your house, fi sabilillah. Ultimately, you're doing the Ahlul Bayt to say uh, Ahlul Bayt a favor because they want you to improve yourself. That's the message. Of course. So Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, as you mentioned, uh, the lectures and uh, the lecturers who um, preach the uh, the doctrine of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Uh, the story of, uh, of Imam Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt was brought to us in Arabic, but Islam has spread out not only through the Arab world but to also China, uh, Alhamdulillah we have in the US, in Canada, UK, Australia, wherever you go there's a Shia and it's, uh, it's not a negative thing but uh, when the reciter and the lecturer, even the Radud, they're in an English community yeah. yet they recite <laughs> in Arabic, yeah. you know, and the children there, they actually grew up in an English community so they tend to, to lack Arabic understanding. 
yet the lecture in the Radud, uh, they lecture and recite in Arabic. So is there a lack of English reciters or English lecturers? And sure. What is the, the point there? As I've seen, there's been a major increase in English lectures throughout the UK and the USA. Mm -hmm. And when a majlis is being run, it starts off with the lecture and then it goes to the lot of maybe food and question and answers. So if you're going to have a lecture in English, mm -hmm. you're going to attract all audiences. Like you said, the message of Ahlul Bayt is spread throughout all nations. So if English is <coughs> the universal language, Surely we should continue the theme of English and portray the message of the Ahlul Bayt. Because if we're going to start reciting Arabic, which is, you know, obviously it's a beautiful thing, the, the Arabic language, be in the Urdu language, <coughs> or whatever cultural background you're from. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how, like, for example, I started off reciting Arabic, but then I realized there's a demand for English, and then I switched to English. And obviously, if there's an Arabic medalist, we go read in Arabic. Yeah. You have to try and always accommodate the audience that you're, you're reading in front of. Yeah. And especially if you're going to have an English lecture, you're going to have a mixed audience, be it from the Khoji community, the Pakistani, the Arabs, the Iranians. You have a mixture, and you have to accommodate for all. So the only way to do this, if you're going to have an English lecture and the audience is mixed, is have an English Latmiya. Of course, yeah. The only, re well, there's, there's, I would say there's quite a few reasons why um, people are hesitant to recite in English, but I see one of the main reasons why mm -hmm. um, people don't really recite Latmiya no has an English is because they don't feel that connection in English. And... Um, there's there's always positives and negatives for each thing and maybe inshallah we can discuss this sure. um but i do stress the point of um reciting english latmiyat because at the end of the day we're trying to get the words across we're trying to get the words to penetrate into the hearts of the uh, the audience and if you're going to recite arabic and then there's a urdu um the, there's an urdu speaking person who doesn't understand what's going on mm -hmm. Yes, there's still a service to Imam Hussein to do the martyr, but it would be so much more beneficial to them if they understood the words. Of course. Hence why English is the way forward, inshallah. Uh, definitely. Uh, we actually see in the UK and uh, in the United States, every Arba'een and every on the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, <coughs> people spread the message of Imam Hussein, similar to what happened in the Karbala, Raghul uh, Tawarij, and... Uh, other practices, they actually go out walking and you, you see them. Mm. I mean, I and you, we, we, we live there. So we see every Arba'een, people walk with thousands actually. Uh, last year, I think was reached 44,000 in, in Sweden. They just walk, they just march from a place to another place for the sake of Imam Hussein. Um, but uh, speaking of English reciters, uh, there's, ten there's a tendency for issues to rise when reciting in English. So. What, what are your thoughts about that? Sure, um, I would say currently right now there's, there's a lack of English reciters and there's reasons for that. Um, the issues are, <coughs> what people tend to do is they are used to reciting in Arabic or Urdu or mm -hmm. Farsi, for example, and they want to start reciting in English, but mm -hmm. they don't know how to. So the easiest way for them to start reciting in English is if they get the poem, they use the same tune and get words in English and apply that same tune that they read in Farsi or Arabic and apply it to the English words. So they have a, they have a set tune and they start reciting that same tune in English. Mm -hmm. And quite often, the tune that are read in the Arab world, albeit like for example in Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, mm -hmm. it doesn't match what the Western world likes. Of course. Quite yeah. often. Not always, but quite often. And when you're listening to it, you don't feel connected because it seems unnatural in a sense. You've got a, you've got you've got a tune that doesn't fit into a community, so that's one of the reasons. Also, people, th th some communities, they don't really, you know, accept the English language just yet. But alhamdulillah, bit by bit, we're trying to we're trying to push through those barriers, mm -hmm. trying to under like trying to get the message across that we're trying Inshallah. to spread the imam the, the the message of the Ahlul Bayt for everyone, hence why English. Um, so that's why there's, there's, there's a way to overcome the problem of connecting to the audience in the English language with the tune that is set for the audience that we're reciting to. 
And a way to do this is by creating your own tunes that match the audience while still having the beat of the Martin. If it's in a Pakistani um, style, you can still have the beat. Or if it's the Arab way, you can still have that beat, mm -hmm. the, 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 the pace of it. It can still stay there. But you're going to have new tunes to match the audience. So maybe, you know, the maqamat, the set tunes that are read in the Arab world, they don't, they don't apply maybe for the Western world. In some cases it does. So that's why I do believe I stress the importance of start for reciters to start making up their own tunes as opposed to copying the famous reciters in the Arab world. Um, because if, if we continue to do this, maybe people are going to feel less connected and less emotional with Imam Hussein and that's the last thing we want. So a way to make your own tunes up is to have an idea of what people like but make sure it's not, we don't cross the haram halal boundary, keep it halal, i.e. Mm -hmm. don't, don't copy those who, um, uh, those tracks which are played in amusement and entertainment gatherings. Yeah, we actually see that a lot. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's one of the main issues, I mean, quite often, when I was in Basra, so yeah. I was walking down with my uncle and uh, we were just walking in the street and I don't know, it just it seemed like there was a disco going on. Right? Yeah. So yeah. like, I don't know, I thought, I thought we're in a Shia kind of like, especially Basra, it's like proper Shia filled area. So like, yeah. what's going on here? So we were walking, walked by it. It wasn't, it wasn't a disco. Yeah. It was just a guy selling some CD and it's like saying, Ya Bal Fadl. Nice. Ya Bal Fadl and you have... <laughs> A disco beat going on to yeah. it. I mean, do we really think Ab Abu Fadl Abbas is going to be happy with this? Yeah, that's do we really sad. think that Abu Fadl Abbas <coughs> is going to be satisfied with the beat that wants make wants you to make you dance? I mean, you can't have a beat. It's not haram to have a beat. Um, be a love me a beat. That there's nothing wrong with that. But when it makes you want to dance, yeah, and it makes you want to, it f makes you want to like you know you want to get up, you know, that. Is I do believe that's why we're crossing the halal haram boundary. Amusement, entertainment, gatherings, discos, clubs. The people are starting to mix things together. Yeah. And this, I personally do believe, and I don't know if uh, people agree, but I do believe that this is mm. doing a disservice to Ahl al -Bayt. Yes, the poetry might be amazing. The poetry that's been written uh, with the, with the, the tracks that seems like a disco's one. The poetry might be written really well. But if it's coupled with the beat that wants you make makes you want to dance. Yeah. That makes you wanna. That's doing this. Is the Ahlul Bayt sacrificed their lives for us? How can we go and produce tracks that makes you wanna um, do the the opposite of the message that they're trying to give to us? And this isn't just going on in Basra. It's going across across Iraq and, um, to be honest, in certain communities that I've recited in you know certain areas that I've recited in. We have to ensure that uh, for our dear brothers and sisters that the message of the Ahlul Bayt continues to strive. It doesn't matter about how many views you're trying to get on YouTube. That's, that means nothing. What, what, truly, yeah. what truly means something at the end of the day is your intentions and what the Ahlul Bayt want. So you can, you can have a person with a track that gets 100,000, 200,000 views and you get a person who gets 2,000 views. Or the 2,000 view person has written a fantastic poem written in a beat and the tunes um, and the sound effects that are, pre that are presented in the track are completely halal. Whereas the 100, 200,000 person, yes, he's got a wider audience and yes, people, he's, he's well known, for example. I'm not, I'm not really specifying an English size, I'm speaking in general. Yeah, this person's having a beat which, the, which, which is contradictory to the message of the Ahlul Bayt. Of course. That's actually sad to see because the message of Ahlul Bayt was it was spread through their own blood. Ahsan. Yet we actually, um, some people come and mis misinterpret mm. their message Ahsan. by adding, as you said, disco beats. A disco beats. I mean, that's actually I I see that too. Exactly. Like I was I was shocked to see because you know, and uh, maybe that was a a, a maulid, you know, or a nasheed because we're in Shaban. Yeah. But it's it's sad to see that even during the Arba'in and the uh, Muharram, they put on these really weird, yeah. you know, latbiyat. Yeah. And I'm shocked to see, like, I mean, do you know what is, what's going on? Sometimes, like, they say that their excuses is, you know, my marja allows it. The thing is, your marja doesn't allow you to put a disco beat. 
I've never heard of a marja which allows you to put a disco beat in yeah. a track. I mean, I, I don't, have you heard of a marja? I mean, I, I never heard. You're of allowed to put sound effects which um, to add it to make the atmosphere Vocal. of the tr vocals, be it vocals or the ahats for the yeah. tracks, or be it you know just simple. It depends on your marja, and we don't want to get into details. So it depends. You have to look into it, and the, each individual has to research this before releasing our track or before listening to a track. But the general theme is. You know, you need to you need to have the respect for the ahl al Yeah. And if the if if you have a track which has nice sound effects, which makes you want to cry, there's no I, I I don't see an issue with that because we're still we're still portraying the message of the ahl al in the yeah. correct manner. However, when it makes you want to dance, that's where the red line is. Speaking of uh, haram and halal, uh, what are the negative effects of music and the music industry? So yeah, quite a lot. Quite often, um, my my friends come to me and they say, uh, Ali, you know, I'm listening to a track and I put my headphones in, and I'm listening to this music, and it's not harming anyone. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't see the, what, what what the problem is. I'm just going to college on uni university, and I'm I'm inside my bus. I put my headphones in. I'm not trying to distract anyone. I'm just listening to it, and to be honest, not having an effect on me. And it might seem that way on a superficial level, but later. The music, bit by bit, does actually have an effect. So one of the effects is hardening the the, the heart. You know, mm -hmm. how can a person like listen to certain things which are prohibited in Islam, and yet at the same time you want to develop your your spiritual being towards Allah? So it, that, that links into anything that is like haram. So you do you do a certain act which is haram. Yet you want to continue to develop spiritually. A barrier from you developing spiritually is doing haram acts. But if we stop doing the haram, we remove that barrier and it enables us to get closer to Allah. And one of it, like I said, is hardening the hearts. And the lyrics sometimes are not on the same level as what is on the Islamic, on the Islamic guide within the lyrics that are, that are, that are listened to in certain... Um, categories of music so I'm not going to get into the detail of it but it's really important to understand that if we're listening to these type of lyrics and at the same time we want to develop our spiritual develop uh, our spiritual development it's going to be very difficult to balance the two because if we're going to do one thing which is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the same, at the same time we want to develop our spiritual being it's very difficult which is why it's really important to try and avoid music which is prohibited in Islam because at, especially for the youth at the age when the, between the teen years we're trying to develop our spiritual beings mm -hmm. and this is a very critical point of a person because especially in teen years because we are faced with so many things being called university and we're trying to develop our spiritual beings but there's so much facade and haram around us especially in the west and of course, yeah. and and music just only adds on to the problems there's, uh, there's 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 a really good replacement for music which is du'as qur'ans latmiyat nasheed this is one of the reasons why there's been an increase in demand of english because some adults don't want their children to start listening to things which are allowed which is latmiyat which are nasheed <coughs> this is why we're trying to Record and produce as many tracks we can in the quality which is required in the eyes, um, inshallah, for the Ahlul Bayt So there's 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 a many there's many negative things, and I'm sure people can go and look up the negative aspects of music um, in the Islamic books. Um, but this is this is one of the major reasons why we're trying to stress on latmiyat and nasheeds. How do latmiyat um, affect our personal life, and uh, as as Personal to you as well. Sure, yeah. I mean, personally for me, Latmiyat is the, the foundation for my journey towards Allah. Um, people inspired me to start reciting, mm -hmm. and through that, I started, to, I started to understand the tragedies of Imam Hussein through the poetry which I was reading. Mm -hmm. And that made me build my connection with Imam Hussein, which ultimately made me build my connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned earlier, through the Latmiyat and through the Nasheed, a person can start understanding the tragedies of the mm -hmm. Ahlul Bayt. And the Ahl al-Bayt are our guide and our idol, our, 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 our guide as well as our role models and for us to develop ourselves we have to try and copy them and understanding their tragedies allows us to develop our spiritual, our spiritual beings 
ultimately so we can get closer to Allah. So that's why it's really important to um, focus on love niyats, inshallah, as well as anashid. Alhamdulillah. Um, you have um, something to recite to us? For us yeah, Allah? sure. We have, um, uh, we have a poem for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Allah as well as an ashid for Imam al Hujjah, Ajallah Faraj al Sharif. Inshallah. So you can bless us with your, uh, with your inshallah. precious voice. The world, the world filled with hatred and darkness. If mankind was a book, these would be the dull and dim pages. For it was a hopeless swirling of misery truly in the dark ages. A time of chaos, every man for himself. It was killed or be killed, no sympathy, cruel and simplistic. A society that was mystic and ritualistic. Heartless men who live, lived of misery, most were pessimistic. Very few realistic, only one was optimistic, only one had hope was futuristic. Ah, they worship statues, worship stones of their own creation. Rocks and pebbles were their salvation, and with these gods there was an infatuation. They would bow and bend in prostration, kiss the feet of their lord and master, a figment of their own egotistical imagination. You can imagine Muhammad's frustration And he left to go up in the mountains and ponder About the world, his life, the universe He would ponder and wonder humanity's unanswered questions He would contemplate and with the concepts of God He would think away from the evils of society from all the hate, he would sit and unknowingly to God he would prostrate. And this would continue for time until from God there would come a sign. From God to Muhammad, Jibra'il went from God to Muhammad. A message was sent, this message from the Creator. You are the people, Saviour, the final prophet. You are chosen to be and a hero for all of humanity. Whose name across the galaxy inscribed in our memory. Mentioned in Salah Muhammad The final phrase we hear And our final goodbye O oh Muhammad your name we do cry in the darkness And the darkest of our depths we remember his name A light in the darkness in the night he is a flame Whom in our hearts burns brightly and with us we hold tightly to the poet as Sayyid Sa'id Al-Hakim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. Uh, MashaAllah, that's actually very beautiful. Allah have luck. And uh, your words actually uh, manifest what happened during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how they actually went to fight him yeah. because of, of what you mentioned. So inshallah you have one for uh, Imam al Inshallah yeah it's very relatively short one for Imam al-Hujjah it's, uh, it's got a nasheed, it's got a tune to it uh, about Imam al-Hujjah and just an overview of his life No disco <laughs> No disco <laughs> <laughs> Your mother Nargis and al -Askari. To you they gave birth Imam al-Mahdi Imam al-Mahdi Born on two five five Born in Samara The final Imam You are the Hoja You are the Hoja What you had to do You were only five At a, at a such young age When your father died When your father died What you had to do When you were five At such a young age When your 
father died when your father died your uncle stepped up to lead this life but only you could pray for your father pray for your father and from then till now together we wait for your appearance final imam we try and recall every single day that you are our guide that you are our guide won't let us astray won't let us astray to the poets as said said al hakim allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad may allah hasten the reappearance of our beloved imam al mahdi alayhi uh, salam respected viewers brothers and sisters in islam lastly i would like to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our uh, special guest and to bless all the respected viewers and brothers and sisters. Wassalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Inshallah. May Allah bless you. Ahsantum jazakum Allah khairah. Ahsantum. Hearts are shouting, 14 lights are shining. Send your love to Ahmed and Zara. Souls and hearts are shouting, 14 lights are shining. Send your love to Ahmed and Zara. Their love will protect my sight. They light up the dark